Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be doing a look for you that is very different to the sorts of looks that I normally bring you here on my YouTube channel. I want to bring you something a little bit different today, something that's a little bit more creative rather than refining. This style of makeup is definitely something that I do quite a lot within my work, but not necessarily something that I bring you here on my YouTube channel. It's certainly not out of my own comfort zone, but it might be out of yours. I'm going to be doing a look for you today that I did on myself a very long time ago, and I'm going to recreate it and add additions and reductions where need be, depending on how I feel. So the look that I shall be recreating, I shall caption it here. And this was a look that I applied to myself and of course styled it accordingly with accessories and clothing just to enhance the overall effect. Now the products that I'm going to be going in with are very heavy duty on the skin. A lot of grease paints, a lot of acrylics, those sorts of things. Due to the fact that the products I'm using are quite harsh on the skin, as well as being quite heavy duty. I want to give the skin as much moisture prior to application. My own skin at the moment is quite dry, but that aside, we are here for you today. And first of all, I'm going to go in with Bioderma's Intensive Balm and apply that. And I'm applying quite a liberal amount of that to the skin, especially around the chin area, which is where I get very dry. And I'm applying it everywhere, aside from the eyelids. So the first product that I applied in the look, if I remember correctly, was this Cryolan Supra Color Blue right here, this paler one, in the shade G82. Because of the nature of the product, I do tend to use my most inexpensive brushes. Now, I'm not too worried about how it looks around the edges at all, because one, I will be going around them with black, and secondly, I will be applying a wig once complete. So I'm just building that up in layers. It does require a few just to get it quite opaque. Now some of you are probably thinking, why not use a MAC Pro Acrylic or an Aqua Color or body paint? I absolutely adore MAC Cosmetics acrylics. However, this shade is far too bright. I want it to be almost like a pastel blue, but still very rich, which this G82 shade by Cryolan happens to be. And as well, I find sometimes with body paints, even when you apply product to them, they can sometimes start to become quite dry and crack off. Whereas with these creams, once they're set, you can really build up quite a lot of product on top, certainly with powder eyeshadows. You can also even apply powder eyeshadows directly to them, which of course can be more longevitable. I'm just going to take that quite lightly over the lid as I'm going to go in with eyeshadow regardless. Now just to make sure that the texture is all fantastic, I'm going to apply some more of the grease paint with a sponge. This is probably one of the only contexts that I use a sponge in. I'm really not a fan of them, I think they're slightly rancid. But I'm just going to pat that into place with the dabbing motions. Of course with colours like this and with products of this nature, I do keep some sponges in my kit just in case I require them. So with that now applied, I'm going to set it through with some of Ben Nye's Natural Set Colourless Loose Powder. And I'm just pressing in the powder quite loosely. As I want it to be matte. And you can actually just almost tap around to check if it's all set through. Now, as I said before, we will be cutting around the blue, so the edges being a little rough doesn't really matter. So I'm going to sketch in a slight shape for the eyeshadow that I wish to apply, and I'm going to do that with Illamasqua's pencil in the shade Debonair. I'm just applying it to the lower part of the eye, first of all, as we are going to do a cat eye with this look. And originally with this look, I did do a cut crease, and I took it into the nose slightly. So we're just going to blend that pencil round. So we're just sketching where we're going to put the shadow with the pencil first of all. And just sort of connecting the two together. Because if we drag too hard, we'll disturb what we applied already. Now on the original look, I applied eyebrows. And I'm going to do the same thing today, but apply them a little straighter than I normally would. And to draw on eyebrows, I'm going to then apply a black eyeshadow and do so with Elamasca's eyeshadow in the shade Obsidian. Because the eyeshadow look is quite large, I'm actually just going to apply this very, very high. A lot higher than my natural eyebrows grow. I think I'll actually take some blue through eyebrows as well. But I want the eyebrows to look almost quite neat on the bottom, but rough on the top. And I want them to be quite straight and a little androgynous looking and a little hairy. So I'm just using slight 
flicking motions as if we were drawing in individual hairs. Now, it's quite a long brow and it's quite straight. Now I'm going to begin sculpting the face with Illamasqua's Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Victim, which is very fashionable to be nowadays. And I'm just going to start stippling that colour on very lightly. And this will provide us as a, with a base for a darker shade of contour, as it is quite a similar colour to the base that we used. However, the undertones within this eyeshadow have a little bit more green in them. And I'm just flicking it upwards. And I am going to go around the perimeter of the face to sculpt as well with that shade. Really just building up the color. I absolutely love working with blue. I think it's a really, really beautiful color. I certainly wouldn't mind having blue skin. Besides, I've already got blue undertones within my natural skin tone anyway, so it might be complimentary. I'm just going to apply that to the temples as I'm going to wing the eyeshadow outward. But first of all, we're just creating this gradient. And by just taking the brush and almost moving it very delicately down, so you apply the most of the product where you want it most concentrated and then move the brush further down as there is less product on it. That way you begin to build a gradient. But you can see that the contour is appearing quite rounded. I actually want to make it harsher. So I'm just going to apply an additional amount of blue at the back of the cheekbone. And I'm just taking a pencil brush and softening the pencil that we applied earlier. With the same Victim Powder Eyeshadow, I'm then just going to apply that to the lower lash line. And with these sorts of colours, you really do have to sort of just press everything on. But I don't want to take it too far into the inner corner, as I want the inner corner to look quite pale. And I'm just pulling it upward and outward slightly. And then with a bigger brush, I'm just going to apply a little bit more of that blue shade. And then I'm just stippling that colour on. Doesn't really matter how neat we are at this point. I want to actually concentrate quite a lot of the colour in the inner part of the crease that we're doing in the socket. Almost that it pulls the eye upwards slightly. Because when everything can go outward, when you've got a look that's quite cutting, it can just start to look a bit disproportionate. So I'm just adding height to the eyeshadow there and working it into the eyebrow and taking that colour down the nose slightly. It's probably the only time that I ever really contour my nose. And just moving it down and round and softly blurring the colour. And then taking the same colour and just drawing in with a clean angled brush just to really neaten it. Where you want it to look neat, a good tip is to apply the brush and then flick it in the direction away from where you're cutting. That way you create more of a gradient outside, but still keep a nice, sharp, harsh line. But I'm not going to make sure it's incredibly specific yet until we have the majority of the colours applied and blended. Now I'm just winging that out slightly. I don't want to make it too wingy, but I do want there to be a faint connection with the temple. Almost like an underline. Again, because there is curvature within the look, I do not want to apply anything that's too winging and elongating, I think it would start to look disproportionate. So I do want there to be an underline into the temple, but I'm going to keep the majority of the eye look certainly more rounded. You do have to be quite careful when blending with a cut crease, as the colours can start to look a little bit murky or can disturb the line that you may have drawn. Even though we shall be neatening it later, it is something to bear in mind. And so far we've just used one colour, and as you can see, the blue starts to look quite intense. And you can always go in with a clean brush just to soften any edges. I just want to apply more blue just there. So it brings the look upward without winging it. I'm concentrating a little bit more of that colour just at the bridge of the nose. I almost want to merge the beginning of the eyeshadow into the look, but I don't want it to be too dark. I do want there to be some definition. And you can actually just go back in and just, I'm very softly, just almost lightly, very little pressure, just moving the brush over the skin. And because I want to focus a lot of the light around the eye and certainly on the inner part of the cheek, I want to almost bring the contour over so it's more coming inward. So by doing that, I'm just softly moving the brush over. And to intensify the crease, I'm then going to apply Elamasca's eyeshadow in the shade Intense, which is a similar tone, but darker, and has a slightly more greener undertone. And first of all, I'm just going to start to cut round. And it really is just quite a long, careful process. And I'm going nowhere near the line. I'm just sort of blending, but stippling on the main part of the colour first. 
You really just have to build it up quite slowly with this colour. Blues do require a little bit of work. They're not as hard to blend as blacks. However, you do have to be quite careful with them. I'm just going back in with some of that intense, just to intensify. So I do want to add a bit of colour here, but without making it a wing. So that there is a solidness here, so that it does pull the eye up and out. So I'm almost curving it round and up, which is a good way of lifting the eye, but avoiding winging. Going back in and just blending over what we've applied. So that is what it looks like so far. It's quite intense, but I don't want to add any black just yet, certainly not to the crease. However, I am going to go in and apply some gel eyeliner to both water lines and upper water lines. And to line the water lines, I'm going to use Inglot's black gel eyeliner in the shade 77, which I'd probably have to remark as being my favourite gel eyeliner. It's the blackest and the most long wearing. And powder puffs come in very handy, certainly when you are applying eyeliner to the water line, as you can just pull the eye down slightly without going in with some sort of greasy finger. It is quite a stark difference, I must say. This one I have gone in and lined very harshly and thickly. It doesn't really matter because all of this is going to be black regardless. However, this eye I've had to be more careful with. I'm now going to go and line the upper lash line as well as draw a point in the inner corner. So that is the eyeliner applied. I didn't want to extend the eyeliner further than the eye too far. I still wanted an elongating flick. However, I didn't want it to be too obvious, yet I wanted it to still have a presence. And to intensify the lower lash line, I'm then just taking some of that intense colour from before and really merging it into the liner that we have already applied. So with the eye coming together, I'm now going to go in and curl the eyelashes. Then I'm going in with my absolute go-to mascara, the Balm's What's Your Type. I'm now going to go in and apply some false eyelashes to the top and the bottoms. Now, because I'm only going to be applying one set of eyelashes, I'm not going to be applying eyelashes on this eye, only on this one. I'm going to be reusing a set of Eyelure 140s, as well as these fantastic lower lash line lashes by Prima Lash. And the glue I'm using is the Duo Adhesive. I'm now going to apply some of MAC Cosmetics Acrylic in the shade Black. Now, I shall be coating one entirety of my face with this. As you can see, it's a very high coverage product. And I'm just slapping it on, first of all, just all over the face. Not being necessarily neat in any way with it. Not yet, not until we start cutting in. It does set quite quickly, so you do have to work with it quite fast. I am going to take it down the neck slightly, as I am going to be wearing a high-necked top, but I just want to make sure that none of my skin colour is present. This acrylic product is incredibly long wearing. So I'm building up the product. It doesn't need to be neat at all, certainly not on the neck. So I have already made the first cut across the face. Now I want to go in and carefully cut down the forehead, then over where we create a square, then down the nose. So I first of all just want to very, very carefully draw down the face just with a steady hand. So I have neatened up the cut around the nose and around the cheek so that when you look straight on, it gives different illusions and when you turn to the side, it seems very, very sharp. But straight on, it has different lines and the more you move, it changes. Then it has come straight up the nose and it curves into the alignment of the eye so that it's parallel to that of the crease as well as following the natural line of the eyebrow. Then I have drawn in a square. It can seem sharp from one angle and direct from another. And then when I look straight forward, it has a slight curve to it, then cuts at a slight angle. Then at the top of the nose, I have drawn in a triangle and cut it off so that we have an alignment with the square above and comes back in and up. But this curves in parallel to that of the crease. So they are both following the same line, as well as following the line of the eyebrow, so that it all flows together. And you can see the curvature coming between the eyebrow and the cut. The shape of the eyebrow also is the same as the cut. They both have a curvature to them that's very similar. Then I am taking some of Illamasqua's powder eyeshadow in the shade Anya, or Anja, however you prefer to pronounce it. I'm just patting that through my natural crease not in the actual crease, just to add a slight bit of brightness. 
Now I'm going to apply some of Illamasqua's powder blusher in the shade Intrigue, which is this pure white powder formula. Tiny bit of that, just to the inner part of the eye and just up the side of the nose, running it along the contour that we applied. Now I'm taking Illamasqua's powder eyeshadow in the shade Cascade. And I'm just applying a little bit of that as a highlight, as well as to the inner corners. Now because this shade is a metallic blue, it will just lift what we've already done. Then I'm taking that Cascade shade and brushing it underneath the brow, just so that we can give the brow bone a beautiful sheen. I'm taking it into the look slightly, it just adds a lovely glisten. I'm taking a little bit more of it just along the cheek, a little bit of it down the sides of the nose, just to reflect light. Now the acrylic does sometimes need to be powdered, it usually dries matte but I've applied quite a lot of it so it's not going to dry matte unless I powder it down. But I actually left it unset last time. I like it looking quite shiny. But I'm just going to apply a little bit of mascara just to make sure that the lashes are blackened. Now I'm taking this Maybelline colour 24 Hour Tattoo in the shade 25 Everlasting Navy. And what I did with this originally was actually apply it just to the top of the lip. But today I'm going to do the entire lip in this colour as it merges with the black fantastically, just so that it gives it a beautiful sheen. Then I took a little bit of that as well, and I applied it just as a highlighter along the cheek. And I'm dabbing it because if I drag it or dab too hard, I'm fearful it might disturb the acrylic, even though the acrylic doesn't really budge at all. Then underneath the eye, almost in a straight line down, I applied some of it, just so that we begin to get quite a navy effect. And you can see where there is shine here and shine down the cheek, I'm just going to change the colour. That's what this step is great for, is I'm just changing the shade of the sheen. So it changes the sheen from being a white sheen to a blue sheen. You can actually just build that colour up and it doesn't really matter if you're messy with it. I like the skin to look black but with an indigo undertone. Then I'm going to apply a little bit more of that to the cupid bow. Just whack it in. Nothing too specific. And a bit of it on the chin. As you can see that just gives us an indigo hue. I'm applying a little bit more of that this time just to the centre of the lip, just so that we create highlight. And I'm actually going to pull it down as well from the lip. So this actually becomes very fashion, very editorial. You tend to see looks like this, especially the way skin is finished in the very refined, the high-end fashion campaigns and advertisement, as well as editorials. Now I'm going to go in with some of MAC Cosmetics Reflex Blue Pigment. I'd almost describe this formulation as a loose pigment of Lamascus Cascade Eyeshadow. And I'm just taking a tiny bit of that along the cheek. I'm also taking a little bit of that Maybelline colour tattoo across the eye. I'm not being neat in any capacity. I just want it to have a blue sheen. Then I'm taking some of that Reflex Blue and applying it to the cupid bow. A little bit on the chin and some more of it up the cupid bow. A tiny bit on the end of the nose and then quite a bit of it on the cheeks. Just to really amplify the blue sheen. And I'm taking it quite far in. That wet effect that the face has, I want the wetness to appear blue, so it becomes very, very glossy. And then I'm going to take that on the forehead, and then some of that on the eyelid. Don't want it to be neat in any way at all, so I'm just building up. What I'm actually going to do is connect the sheen on the forehead with what I've put on the eyelid. And as you can see, it's quite messy. I'm not really wanting, I'm wanting it to look quite, messy as we've got such a sharpness here I want this to almost be a little bit cracky and messy but still very wet and very gorgeous looking with this gorgeous blue sheen. And I'm going to take a little bit of that blue just into the square just so that everything's consistent and then one place that I absolutely love to be shiny is just this section here I think it looks so chic especially when you turn on the light and it's just glossy it's fantastic. Let's take that down the nose ever so slightly just so that the sheen is continued and then a tiny bit at the inner corner and almost taking it into the eye as well. Then I've taken this sticker and almost cut it into a Pac-Man shape. It's a circular one, I've cut a little triangle into it and I'm just going to place that on the cheekbone. And then take another circle and just place it on the forehead, quite high. So that more or less completes the look. I will be back in just a moment. I have now gone in and fitted this bright neon orange wig. I absolutely love the colour combinations between the many shades of blue, contrasting with the bright orange. I absolutely adore this look, and I very much enjoy creating these very elaborate, unusual looks. 
I really enjoyed recreating this look of mine, and I hope that you have enjoyed it too. This look would actually be great for Halloween, or even adapting parts of it. I think black is a fantastic colour on the skin, but when you add a sheen to it, it just comes alive. It's very like the very palest of skin. When you add a sheen, it just comes alive. But I absolutely love this look. I like doing these very elaborate, quite unusual makeup looks. There's a softness about it, yet there's something very hard about it. It is indeed a juxtaposition of many things. I have very much enjoyed creating this look for you here today, and I hope that you have enjoyed watching me create it. I hope that you have either found this useful, helpful, interesting, or entertaining. And once again, thank you so much for watching. And of course, take care of yourself. Bye!